Well, hi everybody, and welcome to this exclusive Lightroom 4 Tips and Tricks video for B&H Photo. My name is Scott Kelby. And I'm Matt Leskowski. So uh, Lightroom 4 is out, and uh, we thought we'd kind of get together and do just kind of like a quick, quick video going over some of our favorite little tips, some things that might sneak by. Um, if you just kind of open up Lightroom 4 and don't even know these things exist, you may never actually even find them, so. Right, and since Lightroom 4 has been in public beta for the last two months, we thought, there's no sense in telling you about the features that we've been telling you about for two months. Yeah, so because you already know them. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. do some fun stuff instead. So I'm going to start with the thing uh, about shooting tethered to Lightroom. Now I love shooting tethered. If I'm in the studio or even if I'm on location, if I possibly can, I shoot tethered where I go straight from the camera, yeah. right into Lightroom. The advantage being, instead of trying to judge everything on a little three-inch screen, little screen, right? Now you can see your images. Well, here I can see each one as they come in is like an eight by ten. But if you have a bigger monitor. You know, 11 by 14, 16 by 20, just depends mm -hmm. on how big your monitor is. But one of the, there were a couple of things that kind of drove me crazy about the tethering in Lightroom 3. One of them is this bar that you see on screen here. I always joke that uh, this tethering heads-up display, that it was designed by Adobe to matter where you put it, it's always in the way. Yeah, it's <laughs> not small enough that you can put it anywhere that's not. Right, so this is going to sound like a little thing, but for me, it was like, yeah. yay! All it is is this. If you hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, you see the little square button right here? This little square button would normally close the, the HUD, the Heads Up Display. HUD. That's an acronym, by the yeah. way. But if you hold the Option, it changes to a minus and watch. Look at that. Yeah. It just tucks away, so you're still tethered. If you wanted to fire, that's actually a shutter button. Mm -hmm. So you could actually do that to fire the image. Then you hold the same key, the Option key, click zooms right back out. So I know it's just a little thing, but it's one of those things, if you didn't know it was there, you'd probably miss it, like you said. Yeah, and, and you don't need all, once you get everything set up, you don't need that whole bar, because it's, it's pretty much all things you're not gonna change, and if you right. would, you'd change them on and, camera and anyway. you have a keyboard shortcut, if you just wanted to hide the whole thing, if you don't wanna see it at all, don't need it on screen at all, it's Command T on Mac or Control T yeah. on PC. All right, so uh, mine is, is, is inside of the develop module. If you go under the tone curve, one of the things that you're going to see is uh, you, can, you can, of course, edit the curve. They added this back in Lightroom 3, where if you click on this little icon down here, you can, you can place points on the curve, and you can start to edit, just like you could in Photoshop. Yeah, it's like a Photoshop curve. One of the things that Photoshop has always had in Lightroom just got is you can go in Photoshop, and you could edit the, R, the red, the green, and the blue channels individually if you want to. Right. Well, now you can do that inside of Lightroom 4. You'll see when you go into that, that point curve editing mode, you'll see a little option over here for channel. And if you choose that, now you can go into the red. So if you just want to tweak the reds a little bit, or just want to tweak the green channel or the blue channel, now you can go in here and do that without having to tweak the entire curve. Very nice. Okay, I have another tethering tip. <laughs> well, this, one, this one's really cool. I love yeah. this one. This was, I mean, I, I, when, it, when they first came out with it, I read about it first and I thought, oh, I don't know how that's gonna be. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I love this like on a level. So let's say that you are shooting to fit into a brochure, a magazine cover, or something like that. Mm -hmm. In Lightroom 4, they now allow you to actually put an overlay of the cover so that you can see exactly which shot looks the best, which one fits in there. I'll, I'll just show you how you do it. You just go into the view menu, and you go to the, well, let's go to the, the library module here. Go to the view menu, and go down here to layout overlay. You get to choose which image you want. Now, I will tell you this, it, it wants it to be an image without a background. So you, obviously you can't put a white background on it. You'd have to be a transparent background. So you would go to Photoshop, you know, build your whole cover, and you know the little white background mm -hmm. layer? throw it away, and then save the image as a PNG format, yeah. ping format, as a that way it keeps the transparency. So I, I, I made that, I did exactly that. And watch when I put the layout overlay up here. So look, there's my, there's my well we can close this, right? Or actually we can hide it, there we go. Now, so I can look at different images here from this shoot and see, see how they yeah. would look. And, and if you hold the command key, you can actually move, move it, around. it, right? And you can control the, uh, the matting and opacity of it. So if you wanted it to be a little, you know, more opaque or less opaque, and uh, you can really see, well, that looks pretty good there. <laughs> That's pretty Maybe cool. Maybe this guy right here. There we go. And you can position to see how you he would look on that cover. So I think the fact that that's. That's in there. Is yeah. Cool. No, that's a neat one. There you go. All right. So, th this one. It, it, what might sneak by, I think, is. If you go to the basic panel, there's some new sliders and everything, and, and I think everybody kind of knows the new sliders that are out there.
But if you go to the Clarity it's been Slider. It's widely publicized. Yeah, and it's probably one of our favorite features. But if you go to the Clarity Slider, it's in the same exact place. Right. It's named exactly the same, mm -hmm. but it actually it works better on your photos. It, it gives Way you better. It, yeah, it works much better. It gives you that gritty kind of edgy look without giving you halos all over the place and, and things like that. But that's not the tip. Okay, so so just know that clarity works better, even though nothing's changed visibly with it. Clarity works better. But we figured we throw in a little tip with it, which is. It's a little double clarity trick, okay? So what I'll do a lot, because you can only go to 100 with clarity here. You're stuck, you get to 100, you're done. So what I'll do is I'll go to the graduated filter, and I'll go to my clarity slider, and I'll crank it up to 100, and then I'll go just outside the image here, and I'll drag, and check out what happens. All right, here, let me delete that, and we do it one more time. So I've just applied clarity to the entire photo. Right. Now, the cool trick about this is that it's at 100, you think you're stuck. Yeah, you're, you cannot add any more clarity. All you do is hit new and just drag another one. And now you can add more clarity. It's like a and double clarity, clarity and you can keep on going. You could do the same thing with the adjustment brush. It's really what you're more comfortable with. I kind of do it with the, with the graduated filter, but you can paint it on, you can keep painting it over and over again and you'll get more of the good clarity setting. Well, there you go. All right, so mine is, um, you just mentioned the, the new sliders and yeah. things. So what happens if you go to the develop module, you, you get Lightroom 4, and you go, well, wait a minute, these are the same sliders that were there. I don't see the there. new sliders. I see fill light, I see recovery. This is the stuff that was in Lightroom 3. Mm -hmm. How do I get to Lightroom? We already have a lot of people asking us about this. And so what it is is, do you see this little warning down here? This little warning in the corner basically says that this this image, you, you I guess, edited somewhat, well, I edited someone, in, not you, man. Uh, somebody edited did. somebody. No, it was me. Edited it in Lightroom three or Lightroom two, an earlier version. Well, those used the processing technology that Adobe knew about at that time. It was the 2010 version. Yeah. Well, if you update to the newer stuff, the the the, the better quality stuff, then you go to the 2012 stuff. That's telling you. This is using old technology. There's better stuff here. <laughs> you click this and watch, watch your sliders change. It updates it to, it's gonna say, you can see the before and after or not, we're not going to. We're gonna hit update and it changes it to the new processing. Did you see the image change? Yeah, you can well? see it kind of changed a little bit. Now it changes to the new, better processing. So all the things you did, like you mentioned the clarity a moment ago. The clarity, one of the things that was the, was the bad side of clarity was, if you applied too much clarity, you started to see a black glow around people. Mm -hmm. It literally looked like a glow. And that's almost gone in Lightroom 4. You can apply like 100% clarity, which you would never do, really. Yeah. It, was, it was very rare where you have an image where you could apply 100. But they now, look good. you can crank it, and it still looks great. It yeah. looks really, really good. But anyway, in this case, when you click that little button, it updates it to the 2012 Adobe's latest technology, better looking images, I highly recommend clicking that button. Most definitely. So if you and if you ever don't see the sliders, if something doesn't look right, chances are you see that little exclamation point, and that's that's kind of your first clue. You yeah. need hey, to can change I show it. one more thing? Uh, sure. Uh, it's an add-on to what I just did. Okay. All right. So I said that back there with tethering. That uh, let me go back to the library module here. With tethering, you you had that little overlay, but you actually the overlay actually works without. You can tethering. put it anywhere. Yeah, you can just pop it in to see wherever you are. So I made it sound like it was part of tethering because I had the tether thing open, yeah. but it really well, is. It works anywhere. All right. Uh, so my last one here. This is a, this is another one of those little things, but it's still kind of cool. Um, I, like the, the the modules that we have up top. First off, we have more modules. Okay. So in Lightroom Four, if you right click right along the top bar here, you can go in there and you can uncheck any modules you want to hide. So I never use the web module. Nobody does. So I hide it. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, you didn't. Um, you know, let's say, let's say you're not you know, geotagging your images or anything like that, so you want to get rid of the map module. If you don't do slideshows, you can get rid of the slideshow module, and you can get this down to just the modules that you use, so it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of navigate around and kind of, kind of cleans up the interface a little bit, which I think is the whole point of that one. It is. All right, one last one. So uh, you, you introduced the tone curve. I have mm -hmm. a trick for using the tone curve. Ah. And it is to help you find spots in your image. So if you shoot landscape photography, if you shoot studio photography, it is so easy to have sensor dust sneak into the image that you don't even know is there. Yep. I mean, a real obvious one you might get, but what the worst thing to do is, is make a print 
or worse, have your image published, and then you see the spy. 10 dots that got by. Your client's not happy, you're not happy. Yeah. So let's take a look at this image here, and uh, I'm going to go over to the develop module. We're going to go to the tone curve, which is right down here, and we are going to click on the little button that Matt mentioned that gives you the kind of curve like, mm -hmm. like Photoshop. You're going to draw, basically, a hill and a valley. All right. So click down here at about a quarter way up and draw your hill. Then you're going to click over here and draw your valley. All right. When you're done, look at all the spots that showed up. Yeah. So, and I'll zoom in so you can really see them, and it's really, really, but see, it makes every little speck and spot. You Dude, didn't see those when we were just You gotta clean your media. sensor. I know, it's, it's <laughs> terrible. But, more, uh, but it, more than that, so what you would do is you would go through here, now that you know where your spots are, and get rid of those, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these and pull it off when you're done. You just drag them right ping, off, and it returns to the. Yeah, you can see the, them much better. Oh yeah, you can see, yeah, they, they get lost. And it happens in skies, it happens in oh, gray yeah. backgrounds and light backgrounds and things. So if you want a quick way to find it, just kind of make a little hill in the valley and you'll be able to see your stuff great. Cool. Well, folks, that is our kind of tips and tricks on Lightroom 4. Again, you know, the, the features are out there in many, many places. You can find those features. Um, but we kind of wanted to take it a little bit further, show you some, some little things that I don't think kind of make it out there into the mainstream. And also, where should you get Lightroom from? Get it from where we buy all of our stuff yeah. right here at B&H Photo. Thanks to B&H for allowing us to share some of our favorite tips with you. Don't forget, Matt actually has a website dedicated to Lightroom, lightroomkillertips.com. He puts all kinds of presets and stuff there. So if you're a, a Lightroom freak, I strongly suggest you go there <laughs> right after, of course, you get Lightroom 4. Cool. Guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.